Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over the Dimco Stay and Play Supplemental Braking System here on our 2022 Ford Escape. So a supplemental braking system is going to be a requirement for your flat toe setup. It's not only a safety concern, it's a legal requirement in every state. Now what the braking system is going to do is, basically it's just going to help out the brakes on our motorhome. So when we're going down a steep hill, we don't have the vehicle pushing behind us. It's actually going to use momentum or inertia rather to apply the brakes inside the vehicle when we're braking in the motorhome. So when we're talking about the inertia, this is a proportional system. Therefore, it's gonna be applying a braking force in the vehicle in an amount proportional to that how we're applying them in the motorhome. So we always get nice, smooth, and even braking. So you do have a couple different options as far as braking systems go. You have portable systems and you have permanent systems. Now each of these do some things great and then there's some drawback to each of them as well. The permanent system is going to be the easiest one to use each time you need to get into your vehicle. There's actually only a single switch you have to flip, but aside from that you can just get in and go. There's no setup each time required you need to get in and take off. Now, the downside of that is it's a quite lengthy installation. Um, it is going to take you several hours to get all the components installed on the vehicle. But once you do get them on there, that's pretty much it. Just a flick of the switch when you need to take off. Now, if we compare that to a portable system, a portable system isn't going to have that initial lengthy installation, but it is going to make for a little bit more each time we need to get in and take off. You do have to set the unit in there on the floor, usually make a couple adjustments, clamp it around the brake pedal. So it's really going to take a little bit more time each time you need to get in and out the vehicle. It really just comes down to your preference. I would say the vast majority of the systems we do here at eTrailer are going to be those permanent systems because people are just looking for convenience with their flat toe setup. So this is a complete system, meaning it has everything you need to activate the brakes on your vehicle. The first thing it comes with is going to be your breakaway switch. So a breakaway switch is going to help the vehicle come to a stop should we ever have an accident and it becomes detached from the motorhome. So that is just a latch disc uh, safety effort there to help our vehicle come to a nice and slow stop there if any accidents occur. The next thing is inside the engine bay here. This is our operating unit. So this is kind of like the brains of the operation. This is where our pump is gonna be located that's actually going to power the brakes. And then we have some signal wires going through there as well. Now let's go ahead and jump inside the vehicle because there's a few more components we need to talk about. Next we have our G-Force controller. This is gonna be mounted in here to the kick panel. And the G-Force controller does a few different things. Number one, it has our on off switch. So we talked about earlier how easy it is once we get in the vehicle, just simply flip that to on, we're ready to tow. And then when we unhook the vehicle, we just flip that to off there and now we can drive around normal. Now, in addition to the on off switch, it also has our adjustment. So this is gonna allow us to adjust our braking force being sent to the vehicle. We'll show you how to adjust that now. So in order to adjust our system here, what we're gonna do is I went ahead and got in the motor home. Granted, you do need to be hooked up to the vehicle or at least the electrical coil needs to be hooked up. So you do need to have your electrical connection between the motor home and the vehicle. I went ahead and turned the hazard lights on the motor home. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this on switch and then our brake should start pulsing with the rhythm of those turn signals. And what we're going to do is to stop that, we're going to loosen this screw here at the bottom and then we're going to move this up until the brakes stop pulsing. That's going to let us know that our system is adjusted properly. And after that, you're going to go up about another eighth of an inch or so and then lock that knob back down. So now that we've explained it, we'll go ahead and show you how it's done. So you can see our brake pedal is pulsing. So we're going to go ahead and move this adjustment up. All right, it stopped there, so I'm going to go up another eighth of an inch or so, and then I'm going to lock that back down. So there we go. Now the unit is adjusted properly. So last but not least, we have our air cylinder. So our air cylinder is clamped onto the brake pedal, and it's anchored to the firewall. And you can see we have an airline tube going through it at the top that's ran to our operating system. So when the operating system sends pressure to that, it's going to depress the pedal for us, and this is what's applying the brakes inside our vehicle. Now, in regards to installation, as we said earlier, this is gonna be quite involved to get everything set up the first time, but once you do so, it's gonna make it very easy each time after. Now, a lot of this is just mounting your different components and running all your wires. Nothing is challenging per se, it's just going to take you some time. And luckily, if you guys stick around for the install part of our video, we're gonna show you exactly how to do that on your vehicle. So the first step of our installation is gonna to be to mount our operating unit. So your operating unit is this unit here. So this is a large device, so you do need to have quite a bit of space to mount this. 
And you can mount this pretty much anywhere you want. You can mount it outside the vehicle. Uh, nine times out of 10, I mount them in the engine bay. And if we look over here on the driver's side, directly beside our air box, we're gonna have a fuse box here, or it has some connectors going through here. So we're actually gonna be mounting that to this lid. So in order to attach it, I'll show you what we did. So here we can see we have it attached. Now this side here, I'm gonna have the vacuum port facing the front of the vehicle, so just keep that in mind. So this is our fuse box cover already on the bottom of that. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill two holes in either side here. So one on the top, one on the side, one on the top, one on the side. Then I used a zip tie to loop it through the lid and then through our operating unit. And then I used some black silicone there to cover up our holes. If we look on the inside there, you can see that black goop. That's that silicone so we don't create any water issues. Now on the other side here, I actually had to bend this bracket down and then I did the same thing. I drilled two holes there on the bottom. The fuse box lid is kind of at an angle there so it is kind of hard to get a drill in there but once you drill those through, we just did the same thing. Use a zip tie, secure everything and then come back with some RTV sealant to block it all up. But now we'll go ahead and test fit the fuse box here cover just to make sure it goes back into position. So we've got our operating unit mounted up. The next thing we're going to install is our breakaway switch here. It looks like this. Now the installation of this is going to vary a little bit depending on what particular base plate kit you have on your vehicle. This is a Roadmaster one and they do have some integration for this switch here. So again, it could vary a little bit depending on what base plate kit you have and whether or not they provide a mounting option for the breakaway switch. We'll go ahead and show you how it installs on the Roadmaster. If you guys have a different one, you'll need to figure this out on your own, but it is only one attachment hole, and as long as you have it at the front of the vehicle here, there really shouldn't be too many issues. So on the Roadmaster base plate, they have these welded on tabs to the cross tube that are sort of angled. So we're gonna be using those for our breakaway switch. I'm gonna place the provided hardware that Demco gives us with the nut and bolt over there, and then I'm gonna run it through the back side. Well, it looks like our bolt is actually a little bit too big, so I'm gonna have to come back with a drill bit here and waller out that hole so I can fit our bolt through. So I've got that hole wallered out a little bit, just drilled it through. Now we can come back with our bolt and place the breakaway tab. So you can see how I bent this a little bit just to sort of match the contour there of that bracket. And then it's gonna be kind of difficult, but we're gonna thread on our nylock nut. So there we go, now we've, not it, now we've got it nice and tight and secure. The next thing we need to do is we need to take these two wires here, and we're gonna be routing these along the top of the cross tube all the way up and into the engine bay. So we've got our breakaway switch mounted. We went ahead and routed our wires already. We just pretty much followed the top of the cross tube all the way over here into this area. And then this point here, we're actually gonna drop down a little bit. We're gonna go underneath the radiator support above the bracket here and then sort of into the engine bay. And at this point, we're just gonna go straight up. We've got a lot of our wires that we ran for some other components coming up in here. So we just went ahead and followed those. And here's actually where we needed to extend the breakaway switch. So you're gonna to need to do this as well if you mount it in the location we did. We just took some, boot, uh, some duplex wire. You can see we have the black and white lead. So I attach black to black and then white to orange. So just uh, picture this white wire as an orange wire and you should be good. So now that we have our breakaway switch wires up in here, we're gonna go ahead and finish mounting our other major components. And then once we get everything installed, that's when we'll go ahead and hook up the wires. We're not gonna show you each of those individual connections because there's a diagram. You can simply reference your instructions, but we will show you how we have everything mounted and how the wires are ran. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head inside the vehicle on the driver's side. We're gonna be installing our G-Force controller. So we're in here on the driver's side and the footwell here. We need to mount our G-Force controller. Now there are some mounting specifications for this and there's really not too many spots to mount this aside from right here. This is nine times out of 10 where we mount them. It's a little bit lower than I'd like, but we have the hood latch release panel up here. So I really can't move it up. So unfortunately, this is the only place we're gonna be able to mount it. It's still gonna work fine. Just might be a little bit in your way. Just be aware of that when you're getting out of the, in and out of the vehicle. But with that being said, we'll go ahead and secure it now using our provided hardware. And we do kind of just want to make sure that this is as level as possible, but I've got them both snugged up here and it's not going anywhere. So we're going to call that good. 
So the next thing we're gonna be doing is installing our air cylinder. So we're in the driver's side footwell here. This is our brake pedal, just for reference. So it's gonna clamp onto the brake pedal arm there. So there's gonna be some nuts on this side of the bracket. You'll use a 3 8 socket to remove those. And then you'll use the clamp plate and place that over the brake pedal arm. And then you'll just tighten down your nuts. Now you wanna leave those nuts loose because we need to adjust the angle here of the cable coming off the back of the cylinder. So if you look at this bracket here that holds our accelerator pedal, on the very bottom corner of that is where we have our anchor point mounted for the air cylinder. So in your kit, you're gonna get a three hole bracket, but there isn't any room for this. So we just use one of the self tapping screws and attach to the anchor point from the air cylinder directly to the bottom corner there of that metal bracket. And you can see here, this gives us a nice straight line straight to the uh, cylinder there, which is what we're looking for. We need to make sure that's relatively level. And then once you do get that level, you're gonna go ahead and tighten down the set screw here, which is gonna secure your tension. And then you're going to start tightening down these nuts here until your bracket bends just slightly. And what we're looking for is a nice even tension on the cable, as well as a nice level pull. Now, the last part of our installation before we wire everything up is your monitor light. So it's just this LED strip here with some adhesive backing. So we're gonna peel off that adhesive backing. There's also a wiring harness on there. We're going to peel off that backing and then we're just going to be sticking it to the back of the rear view mirror here. So just go ahead and stick it on there just like so. I'm going to press down for a couple seconds to get some good adhesion. And now we're just going to take this wiring harness and I'm going to tuck it underneath this panel if I can and then run it underneath the headliner down the A-pillar all the way down to the driver's side footwell. So here we've got our wires coming down from the monitor light. We just went ahead and made a couple connections here. These are listed in the instruction manual. One of them is tying into the black wire from the G-Force. The other one is gonna tie into the cold side of the brake pedal switch, or if you don't wanna splice into that, you can just run a wire into the breakaway switch. So now we've pretty much got all of our major components ran. The only thing left to do is to wire everything up. And as we said earlier, we're not gonna go over each individual connection because these are just simply listed in your instruction manual. But you're gonna have a bulk of wires coming in from the G-Force controller. There's actually a nice grommet to use right back there. Um, it's pretty easy to see from inside the vehicle as well. But all we did is I took a razor knife and I cut a slit in that grommet and then I ran all my wires through there. Now the bundle of wires from that G-Force controller a few of those are gonna tap into your wiring system that you're using for your vehicle, which is separate of this kit here. We installed diode wiring, so we just made a loop into the engine bay and tapped into all of our wires there for that. We have a couple more wires that are gonna go directly to the operating unit. Now, in regards to the operating unit, you're gonna have a few more wires. One of those is gonna to go to power. You can see where we got our power from. So the battery for this vehicle is in the rear. So in order to get power from the front, we just used the stud there that you use for a jump box. And we just threaded on some 3 8 nuts there to give you a little bit of a raised platform. That way we can attach our ring terminal to that stud. And then you're gonna have a ground wire and a couple more that tie into your breakaway switch. But again, just go ahead and reference the instructions there for all those wiring connections. They are pretty simple and straightforward once you get everything installed and the wires ran. So now we're gonna go over our vacuum connection here. Now this one is very simple. This particular vehicle here has electric brakes that still operate when the vehicle is off. Therefore, we don't need any additional boost from a vacuum port. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take the check valve that comes installed inside this hose here. They're kind of hard to get out. If you wanna spray it with some soapy water, use a pick tool, and then you can just sort of rotate this out of place. Basically, you're just gonna take it out and flip it around. You want that black end facing out and the clear end facing the operating unit. And then next to the vacuum port, we're gonna have an airline. So in your kit, you're gonna get a pretty big loop of airline. One end is gonna to attach to this push to connect fitting on the operating unit. You just simply push it in and pull it out to lock it into place. And then we're gonna route this down where the other wires were into the engine bay, or sorry, into the uh, driver footwell there. And you're just gonna simply attach that to the push to connect fitting on the top of your air cylinder. So now the last thing we need to do is we're going to be inserting our yellow 20 amp fuse into the fuse holder in line with our operating unit in the positive terminal. And then we'll go ahead and test everything out by pulling the breakaway switch here at the front of the vehicle and then flipping the G-Force controller on inside the vehicle. So now that we've tested the system, we know it's working properly. That's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Demco Stay-in-Place Supplemental Braking System here on our 2022 Ford Escape.